All right, uh, so I was going to do the second part of why the Brony fandom sucks, but I'm not ready for that right now. So I'm going to go to something else that I think is definitely relevant to the disabled population and just people in general, and that's online dating. And whoo-hoo. Well, I think it sucks more or, and less in some ways than the brony fandom, but definitely in general, it definitely majorly sucks. There's no denying that. It, it's a complete waste of freaking time in my opinion, and I would recommend avoiding sites made to cater to online dating. And I think this is a particularly relevant subject because if you're like me who's disabled, dating in person is really difficult. I mean, it's difficult in general, but it's especially difficult because you know, if you're physically disabled, people can take one look at you and oftentimes, they don't even give you a chance to really prove yourself that you'd be make a good partner. They're automatically like, oh, they're disabled, they're less than or something. So online dating allows you to potentially build a relationship before it gets to that point and maybe it, over it overrides it. And same thing with me. You can't look at me and tell I'm disabled, but you talk to me, it might come out after a while. Maybe not as much as most. I've definitely kind of acclimated a bit, but it can be pretty awkward at times. So that's a fact as well. And online allows you to basically make it less awkward. You take time to reply. You can craft the message to how you want. You don't have to do it in person. So it's not as much on the fly. And there's also the fact that there's more choices, right? So, you know, it's way more choices. It's such a big draw. Why not do it? Well, I'll tell you why not to do it. Because online dating in general massively sucks. And I think it boils down to a couple factors. One, it's a complete fucking cesspool. And two, people on there are single for a reason. And what do I mean it's a cesspool? I call this uh, um, unprofessionally the cesspool effect. So, and this is how I envision it. So you have a pool of singles that come into these online dating sites when they first open. And some of them are toxic, but most of them are probably pretty cool people. So it's kind of like a clear stream with a little bit of sludge on the bottom and it goes into this pool. And over time, the good ones obviously find somebody. So it's like the water evaporates out and the bad ones don't, so it's like the sludge that collects on the bottom. And maybe there's a drain that, you know, slowly pulls a little bit of it back out, but at a rate way less than it's coming in. And, you know, that represents the ones that give up or trick somebody into being with them. But over time, as the water evaporates and the sludge collects on the bottom faster than the drain can pull it out, um, you get a situation where eventually the pool is filled with mostly sludge and there's a little bit of water. And even though that's not reflective of how the incoming stream was, that's what you get because the water evaporates and the sludge doesn't. And the same thing, the people who are decent and worth having in your life find somebody and the ones who are scumbags don't and they keep staying on these sites. And if that leads to a very, very toxic environment full of very bad people that quite frankly don't even deserve to be in a relationship with you in a lot of cases. And I mean, I've dealt with so much shit on these online dating sites, it's not even funny. And this bails on the second point. There's a reason they're single. Um, one of the reasons is a lot of them are too picky. They're too judgmental. The number of people who have immediately stopped talking to me when they find out I still work in a grocery store is pretty extensive, quite honestly. I've had it happen fairly frequently where, you know, you talk to these people and everything seems to be going fine. And then the subject of work comes up and it's like, oh, I work in a grocery store. And then they just inexplicably never respond. Oh yeah. So you're one of those people that wants somebody with a six figure job and I'm not good enough for you, right? And not saying all of them are like that, but I've definitely had people who are through that even when you meet up and it sort of defeats the purpose I mentioned earlier where you get to build a relationship and supposedly they look past all your faults when you finally meet because there's that relationship. No, what ends up happening is 99% of the time when I do get a date, it's awkward and they, they basically just throw me out. They, they completely cut all contact they never reach out to me again. And it's like I meant nothing to them. They just throw it out completely and move on to the next person because I never meant anything to them. I and mean, I'm not even good enough to be their friend because they're judgmental. And they want th this thing that I'm not and I'm not even worth their time. The all or nothing response is definitely a major problem with these online dating sites as well. I remember for a while I was lonely and I kind of used them as a friend finder app. You know, I'd be like, well, okay, fine. If I get a relationship, great, but maybe I'll make some friends. I can tell you it's a waste of time. There's maybe one person who I'm even minorly in contact with that I've met on those sites. The rest of them basically just did exactly what I said. They just pulled away, they stopped trying, they found someone else, threw me out like I was yesterday's trash and never looked back. And it's basically all or nothing with them. They either want Mr. Perfect and you're gonna be in their life a lot or you're not Mr. Perfect and therefore you're not good enough for them and they throw you out completely. 
So you can imagine how great that is on your mental health to constantly be shown how little you mean to everybody and how worthless you really are to them. And that's really great. That's totally not a recipe for mental health disaster when it's sustained over time. Hope you can pick up my sarcasm there. Another problem I have is that some of them are downright like crazy, like actually freaking insane, or at least very least delusional. And that's why they're single, because they, they have issues that they're unwilling to get help with that drive people away, or they're freaking have expectations that are just completely unrealistic and no one's ever gonna meet them. So they're of course gonna stay single. So let me give you some examples of this. One of the few people I had a really long-term relationship with that I met online, she was fucking mental. She basically expected me to text her every hour and would get mad at me when I wouldn't text her because I was in class. And she's like, well, why don't you tell me when your class schedules are so I know? It's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Why don't you understand that I am busy sometimes and I can't always get back to you every two seconds and stop blaming me when I've done nothing wrong. She was also just a real piece of work as well. Like she was very controlling. She'd smother me and I'd pull away for a while and not reply because it was too much, which maybe I shouldn't have done. But you know, it's sort of like when no one listens to you when you try to give yourself space and set boundaries and they just keep steamrolling the boundaries. Sometimes that's all you can do. And then they get mad at me when I did reply. It's like, but it's your fault, kind of. You, you weren't respecting my boundaries and you weren't giving me space, so I had to make my own space. And it was just, it was a real toxic mess. And I eventually had to break it off because it, she just was okay at first. She was supportive, nice in some ways. So I looked past the garbage, but then it just devolved into her being a complete jerk all the time and not really being supportive, being very pushy and controlling. And I don't know, there, there was just something not right there. And this is, this is the type of person you meet on online dating. Not all of them are so freaking crazy, but some of them are fucking, some of them are just like delusional too. Like there was another person that I hit it off with and I thought we had entered a relationship. We seemed cool with each other. We both knew we had PTSD and we seemed okay with it. Seemed supportive, both of us seemed interested. There was a slight snag where she's like, well, I want biological kids. And I came right out and said, listen, I don't know if I want that. I might be willing to adopt, but I don't think I want to get anyone pregnant. And she seemed okay with it at first. And she's like, well, yeah, that's a little bit of a disappointment, but I really like you and I'm willing to look past it. And everything seemed fine, right? We had an explicit video chat, you know, clearly she's interested. And then the next week she just stops talking. You know, she stops saying good morning like she did every day and just stopped talking. So I say good morning, she never replied. I said like, is everything okay? She never replied. And eventually she said like, oh, hey, I just didn't feel like talking. And I called her off that because that's just rude. Like you don't feel like talking. Well, fucking tell you that for God's sake. Don't just leave me hanging and make me think that something happened to you. That's just really rude because you don't feel like it. You just don't even reply at all. And she said, oh yeah, okay, fine. I won't do that anymore. And then the next day she just pulled it out completely. She basically said, you know, I can't do this anymore. This isn't gonna work. You clearly like me a lot more than I like you. And you know, the pregnancy thing, I can't move past it. And that's kind of where I say like the delusion comes in. First of all, how does your feeling of somebody change that quick? You say you really like somebody. You say you want to be with them. And that week after, you dump it off because you're not interested anymore? What the fuck is that shit? And delusional. Her, her obsession with this pregnancy thing and getting pregnant was because she was in a bad relationship when she was pregnant and it ruined her image of it. And look, I'm sorry that happened, but she was obsessed with getting pregnant again as a chance to experience it the right way. And I think it's kind of delusional that you would throw out a guy that was otherwise interested in you because he's not gonna be able to give you that. What, that's all you care about in a partner is being able to experience that again? It's kind of delusional. It's kind of like the ones where they throw someone out immediately because they're not super religious. It's like, why does it matter? There's so many more important things in life than that. And that's what you consider a deal breaker. And you're just gonna throw someone out who is interested because of that and that only? It's just mind boggling. And obviously, and it's very hurtful. And of course, I tried getting an explanation why her feelings changed. And she basically cut me off completely like they all do just never replied again, made it very clear that her intent was to just cut all contact immediately after that and never actually give me even a fair explanation why these things change so much or keep me even as part of her life. Again, you mean nothing to these people. That's what I hate about this. A lot of them are just fucking rude too. I have had people say things to me and it's like, you have any common courtesy. 
There was one who on the second message said, actually, I'm going to stop you right there. I literally have no interest in you. Good luck on your search. What the fuck is wrong with you? Do you have any common courtesy whatsoever? There was another one who made a joke that I didn't like at my expense. And I kind of snipped at them a little bit because it's like, I don't know you. Who are you to say something like that? And they're like, dude, I'm just joking. You're too sensitive. You have no sense of humor. No, you were rude and you didn't leave any indication that it was a joke. Like you didn't say LOL or ha ha ha. If you said that and then I reacted that way, that's one thing. But when you don't act like it's a joke and don't make any indication that it's a joke and then I get mad, that's not me not having a sense of humor. That's you just being a jerk and being pissed that I called you out for it. Uh, there was also another one that was completely hypocritical. Like we tried to meet up on and off for months and she called it off a couple times because one time she's well, oh, I'm in a bad mood. I don't feel like meeting you in a bad mood. And, you know, just kept blowing it off. And then finally we meet up and I saw a movie and I put my feet up on the seat. And she acted like it was the worst thing in the world. And just completely said, you're disgusting. You have no home training, shit like that. It's like, first of all, who the fuck are you to say that in general? You have no fucking home training, asshole. Second of all, it's really ridiculous that you think you have the right to point fingers like that. Because let's be real here. Let's be real. I cut you how many fucking breaks? I put up with you canceling plans how many fucking times? And then finally meet up and I do something that you don't like. And instead of giving me a second chance like I did to you, you just throw me out. Who the fuck are you? My freaking God. You know, um, there's also, some of them are just downright abusive. Some of them are downright abusive and invoke gaslighting. I think I've been gaslit by people looking back more than once in these online relationships. There was one that I met who was in another country. We seemed to be hitting it off and she sent me all these kissy emojis, which I thought meant she was interested. And she freaking even at one point said, I want to ask you out on a date. And then I thought, okay, cool. We're in a relationship, which why wouldn't I, right? Why wouldn't you think that when someone says that they're interested in you? And then the next day she changes her Facebook status. So she's in a relationship with another guy. And apparently she was talking to two people at once and playing us. And I kind of could have figured that because there were times I tried to call her and she was like in another call. But why should I have to suspect that somebody's basically just being a complete player? You know, it's ridiculous. So what I did is I sent some screenshots to the guy that she was with, like, hey, you have a right to know this is who you're getting in a relationship with. And she went crazy on me. She's like, why would you do that? Now I have to fix these problems you caused. No, you caused them by basically lying and playing two guys at the same time. And she's like, you just lost a friend. And I said, no, we weren't friends. You said you were gonna be in a relationship with me, then you basically threw me out. So yeah, I'm gonna be pissed. You lied to me. And then she's like, oh, I never meant that. Those kissy emojis are things I send to all my friends. Yeah, you know what? No. Gaslight, gaslight, gaslight. Very clear what those meant. Very clear what you saying you wanted to ask me out on a date meant. We met on a dating app, for goodness sake. What did you think that meant? For God's sake, you can't do that. You know, it's, you knew what those meant. And you're just trying to play it off as I'm crazy. That's textbook gaslighting. So we cut it off. And I think the real kicker was they, they finally broke it off a, a little while later. I guess he got tired of her bullshit and she came crawling back to me like, well, maybe that guy was nice. Maybe he'll still be interested. I told her to go fuck herself. Not in those exact words, but basically that's what I said. You know, you hurt me. You don't deserve me. You had your chance. I'm not going to be the person you settle for. And I know this because I checked the day when she did that. And I mean, I had checked a couple times before because I mean, it was hard to move on and this had happened pretty quick, and she was still in a relationship with this guy, and then the day that I fucking get a message from her, I check, and it's like, oh, now you're single. Yeah, I can see exactly what you're trying to do. Fuck you. There was another one that I thought was a good match. We met on um, a dating site, seemed to hit it off. She said good morning, good night every time. It was really nice. I thought we were getting along pretty well, but then I noticed some disturbing trends. She kept trying to ask for things that nobody should be asking for that quick in a relationship. Like she'd ask for my Netflix password so we could watch stuff together. She claimed that she, did, she wanted me to buy her a laptop because apparently she didn't have access to one. And she kept asking for things that you just shouldn't ask. 
And I brought it up to other people around me and they're like, yeah, that's, that's a problem. You can't be doing that. And I brought it up with her and said, this is a problem. You can't keep doing that. And first she tried to gaslight me. She's like, well, you never felt that way until you talked to these people. So clearly they corrupted you. No, I did feel that way. Stop trying to make it look like I'm insane. Then I tried to tell her, hey, you know, th I'm willing to give this a shot, but you need to stop bringing this crap up because I'm not comfortable with that. And she's like, well, you don't trust me. And a relationship can't work without trust. Yeah, I just met you a week ago. No shit, I don't fucking trust you. And it made me mad too because she kept dancing around the question. It's like when I'm asking you, hey, can you not do this because I don't want you to do this. It makes me uncomfortable. And instead of ever just saying, okay, fine, I won't do that. You keep dancing around the question. You keep trying to play it off as it's no big deal. You know, that's just fucking bullshit. And I eventually had to just cut it off because it's like she wouldn't even agree to that simple request. I tried to set up boundaries and she just wouldn't listen to them. She kept playing it off like it was a joke and it was, you know, just bullshit. There was another one who contacted me, I think from a Facebook dating group. And it, the same thing, you know, she was an asshole. She seemed all cool at first, but I noticed some red flags when we talked. And she brought up like, I want to be physically married in two years. It's like, wait, what? Um, not proposed physically married in two years, what? I mean, we agreed to let it go, but it's sort of like, that's a bit of a concern for me. And she also is like, oh, well, in a relationship sometimes you just need to trust things. It's like, but dude, we haven't even met yet. And she also kept trying to get me to like drive her around and get in the car with me when I was, hadn't even met her yet. And it's like, First of all, you don't know me. You don't know if I'm some fucking serial killer. Why would you want to get in my car first thing? Second of all, why are you obsessed with this? Is this some sort of setup where you're going to take me to your friend's neighborhood and they're going to jump me? Like, no. So, you know, I tried to bail out and eventually I kind of admitted I'd been stretching the truth because, you know, maybe shouldn't have done this, but this is what people basically pressure me to do my own family so of course i ended up doing it i said i kind of stretch the truth i can't really drive that far and i don't really feel comfortable going that far to meet you and she went off on me like wow you know i can't believe it someone who fucking can't even drive who still works at a grocery store you know it just went off on me like it was such a terrible thing i mean you know this is why people lie about that by the way yeah I couldn't, shouldn't have lied, but you know, when you're gonna, when you get this type of hostile reaction, you get the temptation to do it. And so this is why people don't come right out and say this shit is because when someone finally figures it out, they stigmatize the shit out of them, even though it's something I can't control. And then they just basically ended it with, you know, I know you're not the one that's meant for me, meant for you. Okay, so God put you on this earth and said you are destined to be with greatness. So fucking crazy, so fucking delusional. This is all shit that I've had to deal with from online dating. And you might think I'm cherry picking. Maybe I am, but there's really no good experiences that I can have to counter this. There was even another one that was less delusional than this, but still delusional. We talked for a while and finally met up and she just basically was cold for a little bit after that. And I figured this is exactly what was happening. She's doing the same routine everyone else is doing where they just pull away and cut it off. And she came up with the excuse that there was no spark to make a relationship. You know, fuck the spark. First of all, this isn't a Disney fairy tale thing. So the spark, yeah, maybe there is a chemistry, but that can be built over time. It's not something you always have to have immediately. Second of all, why would you cut someone out of your life completely because there's no spark? If you otherwise get along, you could at least be friends. And hey, maybe there's some single guys I'm friends with. Hmm, that could be a good recipe, but instead you're just gonna be a fool and cut me off completely. You know, I just think that honestly what it boils down to is people on online dating are terrible people. It's the cesspool effect. The good ones find people, the bad ones don't, and that leaves a disproportionate pool of terrible people crazy people, overly picky people, rude people, people who are too freaking, you know, ju judgmental, too hyper to ever settle down on anybody. And just people in general, you don't want to be in relationships with. And that's what's left on these sites. And maybe there's a few good people here or there, but it's certainly not worth trying to find them with the money and effort it takes and the mental toll it takes. I mean, seriously, I was depressed and felt like I would never be good enough for anyone and no one would ever want me. Online dating instilled that in me. And then every time I got rejected, it just reinforced that notion. And I'm gonna be quite honest with you. I definitely, after a while, built up a bit of resentment for the female gender. Because why wouldn't I? I'm not saying it's right, but like when women treat you like you're nothing, you start to resent being treated that way a little bit after a while. I'm a person with feelings. I deserve to be treated with a bare amount of respect and none of them can even do that. So yeah, eventually you just get a little bit tired and it's like, well, if all of them are this way, then they must be the problem or something. No, not all of them are that way. All of them on that site are that way, but 
that site's a terrible representation of any gender as a whole. I know now that a lot of guys on there just send dick pics and act incredibly crude, and obviously not all guys are like that either. You know, I just haven't had to deal with that, so I'm not making a video ranting about it specifically, but I know it's an issue. And all of that has just basically evaporated since I said, you know what, fuck it, I'm not doing this online dating shit anymore. I just can't take it. I feel so much more mentally secure. I actually am interacting with some women who actually do respect me, so that has erased a lot of the stigma I had. It definitely helps when people don't treat you like garbage. That helps you view the group that they represent even unknowingly a lot better. And, you know, it's just, I would think it's a waste of time. I mean, I think it's a complete waste of time. It's a mental health drain and it can breed toxic thinking of making you hate a specific gender when really it's not the gender that's the problem. It's the people on the fucking site that are the problem. They just all happen to be that gender because that's what you're looking for in life. So, I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not saying I agree with the incel movement at all, nor do I support what they do or condone it, but, I can understand where the anger comes from if a lot of them have dealt with the same shit I've dealt with. I can understand why they're angry. People deserve to not be treated that way. I mean, I was, I was fucking mad too. It's like, come on, how come basic respect and a decent, healthy relationship is too much to ask for? That's all I want. And it's like pulling teeth to get it. So I can understand the anger. Again, I'm not supporting them. I'm not condoning them. I'm not condoning what they do. I'm not saying I believe in a lot of the shit they do, like acting like women owe them sex. And since they're not getting any, that means that they freaking have every right to be pissed. No, it's not like that at all. But, you know, I, the fact that I can say that just proves that online dating is not a good influence. It's not something that has helped me in life. It's not something that has helped me become happier. It's not something that's helped me think more civilly, more clearly, more fairly. It's not something that's benefited me in any way, shape, or form. And I would have been so much better off if I'd have never tried it. And that's my PSA to you. Avoid online dating like the fucking plague. You know, I, I avoid it like the coronavirus. Actually, no, that's not even accurate. Coronavirus at least does it quick when it's going to kill you. It doesn't make you linger for decades before it finally says, okay, you're dead. No more suffering for you. It's a slow, painful death on these sites where you just wither away and you slowly lose your happiness. You slowly lose your self-worth. You slowly lose yourself in an attempt to find your partner amongst these toxic people. And it's not a good influence. It's a slow, painful death that really, it's just beyond cruel. Why would you go on these sites and, and pay money for this in a lot of cases? To fucking deal with this. Like, like, even the casino's better than that. At least the casino, yeah, you, ha you lose your money and you don't tend to get much out of it. But at least you have a good time sometimes. You get to socialize with people. You get something out of it. What do you get out of this? <laughs> nothing. You're just wasting your fucking money for literally nothing except a um, fucking therapy bill later on down the line to help you deal with the depression that's caused. That's why online dating sucks. And that's why if you must meet people online, don't go on online dating. I'm not sure like what the most uh, good alternative is, but my view is just find like a forum or something or a game that you enjoy and meet people there. Maybe you can make friends at least. That's that helps a lot. Like I've definitely made some people I would consider friends after I started playing TF2 a lot more. Not any really females. I mean, I guess a couple female friends. Not anyone I'd consider having a relationship with. But, you know, at least there's that positive social in influence in my life now. And it's not just all, you know, wondering when the person's going to dump you because that's what everyone else has done before. And it's just, ugh, it's not even worth it, in my opinion. Online dating is a horrible place filled with terrible people. And you should avoid it at all costs. Just like you should avoid 4chan and fim fiction. They're not going to help you. They're going to drag you down. And you're going to pay money to do it. Why would you do that?